Hi, I'm Kristen Goodwin. On this episode of the Fox News Rundown, there's been a wave of COVID-19 related lawsuits as health officials continue to battle the virus. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano weighs in on some of these legal disputes and discusses how they may play out. Also, special events across the nation have been canceled amid the pandemic, leaving many Americans who've shelled out big bucks for weddings, vacations and concerts wondering if they'll be able to get their money back. Regina Conway, a consumer expert with shopping platform Slick Deals, shares insight on how to rebook or get a refund during these trying times. Plus commentary by Abby Hornacek, host of the Getting Schooled podcast and parked on Fox Nation. The Fox News Rundown is a daily news podcast where we take a deeper look at the stories important to you. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast player by going to foxnewspodcast.com. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I'm Martha McCallum. I'm David Asman, and this is the Fox News Rundown. Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. I'm Lisa Brady. No matter what happens with the virus itself, pandemic-related court fights could linger for years to come over a variety of issues, including constitutional rights. The government cannot willy-nilly interfere with a fundamental liberty, uh, and the governor can't make his own laws. I'm Dave Anthony. This corona crisis has altered a lot of summer travel plans. So if you need to rebook or try to get a refund, be diligent and patient. In all cases, when you're dealing with the travel industry in particular right now, you just should expect that there will be delays, delays to get through to customer service, delays to get responses. And I'm Abby Hornacek. I've got the final word on the Fox News Rundown. While the U.S. slowly reopens, there have been hundreds of lawsuits filed across the country, some of them well-publicized battles pitting state lawmakers against governors accused of overstepping with stay-at-home orders. Those have had mixed results so far. But there are many other kinds, over business shutdowns or employees not feeling protected enough or churches not being allowed to open. One of the biggest battles might be over nursing home care. We're encouraged by the progress that many of the governors and states have made in their testing of their population. However, White House Task Force member Dr. Deborah Burks had urged states earlier this month to test all nursing home residents and staff over two weeks. An Associated Press review finds at least half of the states haven't met that window, some citing the manpower and the cost involved. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has ordered an investigation of the response at long-term care facilities, but he's been criticized for ordering homes not to turn away COVID patients released from hospitals one of several orders he eventually reversed. Cuomo, in turn, has blamed the federal government. The CDC guidance said a nursing home cannot discriminate against the COVID patient because at that time the issue was hospital capacity. But angry and grief-stricken families may demand accountability for the deadly spread through a vulnerable population. The government is largely immune from litigation because it has enacted laws that make itself immune. Judge Andrew Napolitano is Fox's senior judicial analyst. The only time it is not immune is if it acts in bad faith, meaning if it was enacting these regulations for a nefarious purpose, not for a lawful purpose. Thus, the litigation will not be against government. It will be against those uh, whose behavior government compelled against nursing homes Uh, against businesses, um, expect a flood of litigation and a flood of legislation to try and order the litigation as the politicians want it to go and to try and insulate their uh, friends uh, from the consequences of their their own negligence. When it comes to the nursing homes, about a third of the deaths nationwide have been in long-term care facilities. But in New York, for instance, the governor essentially blamed the federal government. Look, I was following CDC guidelines. Would he have to prove that to win a case? Um, no, or no, could, he wouldn't. No? He, he would just have to prove that he acted in good faith because he's the government. Uh, if, if, if he were a private nursing home, he'd have to prove that he complied with government regulations, but because he's the governor, we're talking about Andrew Cuomo, because he's the governor, he enjoys 
qualified immunity. He qualifies for the immunity by demonstrating that his behavior was in good faith. And then he is immune. The nursing homes don't have that kind of qualified immunity unless they can show that they were forced to behave as they did by the government. So if the government forces you to do something against your will and a third person is harmed by you doing what the government forced you to do, theoretically, theoretically, you enjoy the same immunity as the government. Now, that's not quite the case with the nursing homes. I mean, to me, and I've said this uh, on air already, uh, forcing nursing homes to take the knowing sick, no matter who told them to do it or whose guidelines are being complied with, is utterly insane. Nevertheless, they did that, and innocent people died, both the sick people who were sent there and the well people who had been well until the sick arrived. Now, these are issues where there's no immunity involved. Um, then, then the juries will have to sort out whose fault uh, it was. Right, and, and uh, arguably, you know, I'm sure the attorneys for these homes um, and attorneys for the families will, will bring into play what the state of those facilities were before all of this, because advocates for residents argue there are some longstanding neglect issues, and without the ability to sue, sometimes, you know, they would have no recourse, but there's a political article about lobbyists for the nursing home industry already gaining some liability protection in at least 20 states and arguing, you know, that they did have to adapt quickly to new regulations and sometimes didn't have the protective equipment they need. So already trying to sort of say, look, we, d we were just doing what the government told us to do. Well, much of that so-called liability, <laughs> see why I'm laughing and why I call it so-called, Lisa, is at the hands of government executive orders, none of which have the force of law. So however well-intended Andrew Cuomo of New York or Phil Murphy of New Jersey may be, they are not the legislature. Um, as far as I know, no legislature in the country, not the Congress and not any of the 50 state legislatures, has enacted legislation granting immunity retroactively to the nursing home industry. But some governors have purported to do so by their executive orders. Those executive orders are not worth the paper that they're written on. Well, certainly the nursing home debate um, and those cases have a long way to go. What about the lawsuits over churches not being allowed to open? Because there have been a number of those already, too. And the president has argued that they should be considered essential. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. Is it constitutional to keep a church closed? It is not constitutional to keep a house uh, of worship closed uh, for any reason. So when the president says uh, the free exercise of religion is essential, what he really means is it is constitutional. Now, it has been interfered with by the governors. He has said he will override these gubernatorial decisions. He does not have the ability to override them, but he does have the ability. And he's done this to his credit to dispatch the Department of Justice to go into federal court and to sue governors that are impairing the free exercise of religion. Such a lawsuit was threatened uh, to the governor of Nevada. And in response to that threat, the governor of California um, loosened the screws a little bit. Uh, you can have uh, 25 people in a house of worship as long as they socially distance, but you can't have more than 100. Well, there are Roman Catholic cathedrals that hold 3,000. So where does he come up with the 100? He didn't limit um, manufacturing facilities to 100. He just said you have to socially distance. So that's the federal argument uh, that governors are treating non-religious entities different than they're treating religious entities basically saying to uh, the governor of Nevada, uh, you know, you're, al you're about to open up the casinos. Why don't you, how, why are you treating churches differently? Well, and the interesting thing is there, there have also been lawsuits over businesses that 
either opened and they got penalized for opening too early or haven't been allowed to open, you know, along the same lines. Do can the governors actually, based on the fact that there's a public health emergency, order me to stay home, order my business to stay closed, tell me I can't go to church or buy a gun when I want to? Well, we're about to see two types of litigation. One is the criminal prosecution of people who were arrested or summoned for uh, violation of gubernatorial guidelines because the governors are enforcing those guidelines as if they were criminal statutes. The uh, governors don't have the right to write their own laws and assign their own penalties. So those criminal prosecutions will all go away. But the barrage of civil litigation will come. You ask a profound question. Does the governor of New York have the right to close down your favorite restaurant and prevent you from going to it? And the answer is no, uh, the governor doesn't. Uh, only the legislature can write laws of that magnitude. And if the legislature did, there'd be constitutional issues as well. Your right to travel is a fundamental liberty. The government cannot willy-nilly interfere with a fundamental liberty. Uh, and the governor can't make his own laws. Just as Neil Gorsuch has written, if the prosecutor could write his own laws and enforce the laws he has written, then he's not a prosecutor, he's a prince. One other thing after this uh, holiday weekend we just had where there were some big crowds in uh, some popular places, and I'll use uh, Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks as an example. The health director for the state issued a warning of, you know, potential long-term and tragic consequences because of social media posts showing a big crowd both in and around the pool, people not wearing masks, too close together. If someone who attended an event like that got sick with COVID, would they have any recourse or they essentially put themselves at risk so it's their own fault? Um, I, I don't know who owns this lake or who manages it or who occupies it. If some private entity does, there might be uh, recourse uh, against them. They have a difficult time proving how they contracted the disease. On the other hand, Missouri recognizes something called assumption of the risk, which is uh, if a person is fully aware of the risk dependent upon certain behavior and undertakes that behavior anyway, then they can be as much as or even more at fault than whatever entity allowed the risk uh, to exist. And even if you're going to some place that's been reopened that maybe isn't enforcing social distancing rules, for instance, you should follow those rules <laughs> because it's, well, listen, it protects We, we all, we it protects all should follow the rules. The, the issue is not, in my view, Lisa, should we follow the rules? The issue is should the government use the power of force rather than the power of persuasion to induce or compel compliance with the rules? The government has a bully pulpit, pulpit and the government can use that bully pulpit to educate and even intimidate. But a bully pulpit is not the same thing as using people with guns and badges to compel behavior, which two weeks ago or two months ago or six months ago and which under any plain reading, reading of the Constitution is perfectly lawful. Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox Senior Judicial Analyst. Always a pleasure, sir. Thanks for your time. All the best, Lisa. Stay well. Hope we can chat again soon. This is Abby Hornacek with your Fox News commentary coming up. The U.S. is giving Brazil... The same treatment China and Europe got in this coronavirus outbreak. If they're in an exponential growth phase like Brazil is, we probably need to stop travel. Which is what happened after midnight this morning. Restrictions that Republican Congressman Mark Green told Fox News make sense. 
Now that Brazil has the second most corona cases in the world behind only us. You look at the counts that are coming to us from Brazil, 300 and plus thousand cases, 22,000 deaths. There's a university down there that predicts that it could be 12 times that. Non-U.S. citizens are not allowed to come here from Brazil or if they've been in that country the past 14 days. Those who have American relatives or green cards are exempt. So anyone with travel plans has to make changes. Something airlines are very used to these days. Ever since March, a lot of flights have been canceled, which means a lot of Americans are trying to rebook and get refunds. In all cases, when you're dealing with the travel industry in particular right now, it, you just should expect that there will be delays, delays to get through to customer service, delays to get responses. Regina Conway is an expert in consumer affairs with SlickDeals.net. The important thing to note is that while the airlines are very flexible as far as offering credits for the future, they are probably less inclined to want to proactively offer a refund. So in that case, you do want to wait until you are notified or that you see that the flight that you were supposed to be on is actually canceled. Don't voluntarily cancel your travel yourself if you're looking for that money back refund. Um, otherwise, you do have a lot of flexibility to rebook. The airlines are being um, offering generous, you know, sort of waiving their fees and you can book for travel in the future. But if you are looking for that money back, it does need to come in the form of a cancellation by the airline. What happens if you decided you don't want to, not only do you not want to go to where you were going to go, you don't want to plan it sort of six months later or one year later, you just want it to be done. The problem with that is if you don't have a refundable ticket and the airline itself has not canceled or significantly delayed that or significantly changed that flight that you were booked on and what constitutes a significant change varies from airline to airline, you may be in the position that you do need to take that credit for future travel. Now, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go to the same destination. You might be able to apply that credit to a different um, flight entirely. However, unless that cancellation is on behalf of the airline, you are likely going to be getting a credit instead. What if you show up, and this has been happening the last couple of weeks, what if you show up and there's a long line and the plane's full and you have somebody sitting in a middle seat and you don't want to travel because you don't like the situation that's not, you don't think it's safe, what do you do? I think the best case scenario there is to really approach the customer service representatives. In some cases, it will depend who it is that you're speaking with. Um, if you don't like the response that you're getting immediately, you may want to, uh, you know, try through the uh, through calling um, the airline's hotline number to get the customer su service support there. Uh, overall, the airlines, you know, obviously everybody is trying to accommodate as best as they can in this changing climate and trying to do the best that they can. Sometimes you might come across somebody who is not as helpful as you would hope. Um, but if you're genuinely uncomfortable about getting on that flight, you should not be doing that. All right, let's move to hotels. Hotels are probably not so difficult, right? Hotels, it depends on if you booked through a third party or if you booked directly with the hotel. Um, I'm hearing in many cases where if someone booked directly, the hotels are a little bit more inclined. And it also depends on the chain that you are have booked with. For example, you know, some have generous cancellation policies like the Four Seasons is allowing uh, cancellations up to 24 hours prior to arrival, as long as the change is made by June 30th of this year. Others uh, where you're booking through those third party online travel agencies, in some cases, it may take more work. If the hotel uh, is closed and, you know, due to the government restrictions and they don't have a service to offer you, you are um, entitled to that refund, but it will take some diligence and persistence in some cases. You know, you might be better off uh, if your travel is still several months out, you might be better off waiting as it gets closer to that cycle to see where things stand. What about a vacation rental? Like, a, like a, if you've done a week somewhere, you have something planned somewhere in the summertime. This is another one where it varies greatly. And again, they're really looking at sort of that short term, shorter term window right now. So Airbnb, for example, has an extenuating circumstances policy that they have said will apply um, under the pandemic right now. And so any experiences or reservations that were made before March 14th with a check-in date up 
to June 30th may be canceled before check-in without any sort of uh, cancellation fees or anything like that. Um, however, if you are booked farther out and you want to cancel, then you are subject to whatever the host's cancellation policy would be in that case. Similar with, with Verbo, which is owned by Expedia, um, they are encouraging refunds for people who, from their owners and managers to issue at least a partial refund for situations where a flexible credit can't be accommodated. The cruise industry has shut down. Remember the Diamond Princess back in February? That was a big moment in the escalation of the coronavirus outbreak. More than 500 passengers got infected. You know, this is territory that people haven't been in before. Renee Smith and her husband Clyde tested positive, were taken off the ship and had to be quarantined in a Japanese hospital. They are staying on top of this, trying to prevent a real pandemic worldwide. Of course, no one prevented that. The Smiths never had symptoms and after testing negative, came back home to Georgia and are taking part in an antibody study of their blood to help other corona patients. This as all the cruise lines try to recover, dealing with cancellations and rebookings. Many of the major companies are offering two options for those who have a cruise booked during the suspension. So either a full cash refund or the option to put the value paid towards a future cruise with some sort of added incentives in the form of onboard credits. So Carnival Cruise Line, for example, has announced that they'll they'll be starting some of their cruises on August 1st. But if you're not comfortable starting that early, you want to wait and see how these things are being handled, um, how the situation is evolving. Passengers booked on any voyage departing before September can postpone the trip without penalty for up to a year. Or you can simply cancel as well. And so you'll want to uh, go to go to the respective cruise line that you have booked with. If you're still interested in taking a cruise in the future, there are some good incentives for people to just take the credit and sort of apply it toward a future sailing. However, if you just want the refund, many of them have that refund request form on their website. Uh, if you booked through a travel agent, then you should contact your agent to help you with that refund process. Okay, but what if it's not during this current time and you already have something for january and you're like i am not going to go on a cruise ship until there's a vaccine or whatever reason you don't want to go because you're still afraid of the virus will they be flexible with you on that that will depend on several factors first of all you may not want to deal with that right now because they are likely uh working on the situation to resolve current um cancellations that are much closer to sale dates and uh, it may depend on what type of ticket you booked, um, what restrictions there are on that ticket. If you have booked with a credit card, you can also check your travel insurance uh, or if you have travel insurance through the credit card that you use to book your travel, if that's something that you need to resort to. And then if, if you did have travel insurance in general, um, you should check that policy as well. It's possible that COVID could fall under an exclusion there, but start with that if you're not making any headway with the cruise lines directly. Do you tell people to get travel insurance all the time or is it not something that people should do typically? I would say in this day and age, it's something that people will probably look at more closely. However, exclusions could apply. So you'll want to get a policy that covers off. Um, it's, it's, you know, all encompassing and you really need to make sure that you read the fine print on that. Um, in general, if it's, you know, basic domestic travel and it's just a trip that you're taking to for a few days, um, it may not be worth it. Here we are coming into the summer and weddings. Lots of weddings, I'm certain, have already been either blown up or postponed in some way or changed in some way. What should people do dealing with the function hall, dealing with hotels, dealing with all the things that, that they've already planned? Right. As if the planning of the wedding initially wasn't, you know, a lot of work to begin with. Now you have the second phase of work, which is trying to figure out what's going to happen, um, whether you're planning to postpone your wedding to a later date or whether you're just trying to, you know, maybe you, your plans have changed entirely and, and you might do something much smaller and local and whatever else. So the weddings and events will vary greatly from what your contracts are from vendor to vendor. And uh, you, should, you should really, first step is pull all of the contracts that you signed. If you still plan to utilize the respective vendors at a later date, work with them to postpone accordingly. Most of them are trying to be as accommodating as possible. Um, obviously, you may not get the exact date that you're looking for because they may have already booked somebody before the pandemic started for a certain date. So there will need to be some flexibility on both sides. 
If you obtained event insurance prior to COVID-19, this is another one similar to uh, travel insurance. Some people get event insurance for things like a wedding. Check your policy. If you're signing up for a policy now, most of the insurance companies are exempting COVID-related delays and cancellations for any new policies. But if you had your policy in place prior to the crisis, you may be eligible for a refund. If you have tickets to a concert, you're probably not going. So many shows are being canceled. The other day, country music star John Rich told our Fox News Rundown podcast. Touring is not going to be anything that's going to happen probably for the rest of the year is what I'm hearing and potentially, you know, into next year sometime. Because the problem is how do you socially distance 20,000 big and rich fans? You can't. So the show must not go on for now. Most tickets are booked through a ticket vendor such as Live Nation or Ticketmaster. So right now... You do need to work directly through them. Um, If an event was canceled entirely, similar to a flight or a hotel that's not open, you are entitled to get a refund. Um, However, in many cases, that may take a while. It's not something that's going to show up in your account immediately. They are saying up to 30 days. And that's assuming that the event itself has been canceled. Um, In many cases, this really depends on who the event organizer is, how those refunds are handled. So if an event has been canceled, you are entitled to get that refund and potentially you should be getting it as soon as 30 days. However, if an event has been postponed, it means that the event organizer is still working to determine whether the event will be rescheduled or canceled. And so in the meantime, your tickets are still considered to be valid. And in that case, you're not going to get that refund. But I'm imagining no matter what it is you're dealing with, you have to be patient, right? Because these people are overwhelmed, probably. That's right. And being rude to somebody on the phone is never a good way to get (laughs) what what you're looking for. If you're trying to get that refund... The the best way to approach it is to be understanding and have that patience. And you might even wait that hour to get to speak to somebody. So it requires patience of everybody, but understand that everyone is trying to do the best that they can right now. Regina Conway, consumer expert with Slick Deals. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's the latest from Fox News Podcasts, The Campaign with Brett Baer, with updates from reporters on the trail and in-studio experts. Brett keeps you informed on the 2020 race. Go to foxnewspodcast.com and download The Campaign with Brett Baer now. Subscribe to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. It's time for your Fox News commentary. Abby Hornacek. What's on your mind? Top Gun. Arguably one of the most iconic releases in cinematic history. I'm going to throw this Fox News commentary back to 1986 because that was the year that one of the best, one of the most iconic, and one of the most quotable movies premiered. Now, you might have heard there's a Top Gun 2 coming out. So I actually had the unique opportunity to do a special for Fox Nation about what it takes to become a Top Gun pilot outside of what's portrayed on the big screen. And let me tell you, this training is no joke. These men and women go through a gamut of exercises and training to earn their status as an elite pilot. And something I really want to note about my time filming this special is these pilots put their lives on the line every single day, not only in missions, but also in their training. Every time they fire up that F-18 and lift off of the runway, they're putting themselves in a position of danger. What happens if something goes wrong in the air and they have to eject from the aircraft? The sheer vertical force of the seat leaving the jet is enough to knock the pilot out. Then they land in the ocean. What do you do when you're being dragged down by the weight of your waterlogged clothes and parachute? There is so much training that goes into preparing for these scenarios, and that goes for anyone in the military. It's easy to shift our attention to this general sense of gratitude for what our military does for us overseas. But before they leave our soil, they're putting in dangerous work on a daily basis. And that brings me to a day we just observed. Holidays remind us of things we often take for granted. 
Thanksgiving, for example, that's when we really sit down and show gratitude for the things in our lives. But that's also something we should be doing every day. On someone's birthday, we shower them with love and give them our complete attention. But again, why don't we do that consistently? I know that's something I definitely need to work on. And the same goes for Memorial Day. We're reminded of the lives of our heroes taken too soon while fighting for our freedom. So since Memorial Day has passed... I challenge everyone, including myself, to reflect on the selflessness of other people, whether it's our military, our frontline workers during COVID-19, or even a loved one, without the catalyst of a holiday. I'm Abby Hornacek. You've been listening to the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Stay up to date by subscribing to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. And for up-to-the-minute news, go to foxnews.com. Love Fox News? Click the subscribe button to get more of the news and opinion you trust. And click the Fox News Rundown playlist for the latest episodes.